Hello everyone. I hope you are all doing well. I'm Manhar and welcome back to MSFT webcast. This is the fourth part of the ongoing mini video series on Hyper-V replica. In this video, we will go over the steps to perform an unplanned failover in Hyper-V. The first rule of unplanned failover is you do not use unplanned failover unless it's absolutely necessary. In other words, if it's not an actual failure, power outage or whatever, use planned or test failover options. Unplanned failover is an operation initiated on the replica VM when the primary VM at the primary site is hit by a disaster. Unplanned failover occurs when the primary site becomes unexpectedly unavailable and the secondary replica VM is brought online to ensure business continuity. When should you use unplanned failover? Unplanned failover is used when the primary site faces an unexpected power outage or a natural disaster. Or if your primary site has been infected by a virus and you need to quickly restore your business with minimal data loss by bringing up the replica VM. You perform the unplanned failover using the replica VMs in the secondary site. The VMs boot up using the most recent asynchronous replication with a maximum data loss of 5 or 15 minutes. Replication is not automatically reversed. It's hard to reverse replication to a site that won't be coming online again. However, once a new production site is set up, you can configure replication to the new host or cluster and perform a planned failover when you are ready. During unplanned failover, a check is done using remote WMI to see if the primary VM is running. This is done to prevent accidental administrator actions on the replica VM. This check helps prevent a split brain scenario where both the production and replica VMs are running at the same time. We have two domain joint Hyper-V servers, HVHost01 and HVHost02. We have enabled Hyper-V VM replication for our VM TestVM01. Right click on TestVM01, click on replication and then select view replication health. We can see that this Hyper-V host is a replica server. Click on close. Right click the replica VM you want to failover, select replication and then click on failover. A pop-up window appears stating did not proceed with this task unless the primary VM has failed. Carefully review the warning message and take the necessary action. Since we want to perform an unplanned failover, we will proceed. If you have turned on recovery history, unplanned failover can be performed against a previous point in time. This is usually done in case the most recent point is either corrupt or not application consistent. Select the recovery point to use from the drop down menu. Always select the latest recovery point from the drop down list to restore the replica virtual machine from the most recent recovery point. Click on failover to initiate unplanned failover. This process may take some time to complete. Please wait for a moment. Once the unplanned failover process is complete, the VM will start automatically. We can see that a checkpoint has also been created for the VM. Right click on VM and point to replication. Let's focus on some important options for now. The first option is cancel failover. Once you perform the failover, you should run some test to ensure that the point in time recovery is accurate and functional. If there are issues with the point in time recovery, you can cancel the failover by selecting cancel failover on the replica VM. You can then select a different point in time and perform the failover again. Reverse replication is a manual failback option provided with the replica virtual machine. This option is not useful for us since the original primary VM will not be coming back. And that's the reason why we initiated the unplanned failover. However, if the primary VM is going to be restored later, we can use this option to change the replica direction. Next is remove recovery points action. You might want to remove all the recovery points associated with the replica virtual machine. You would want to do that if recovery points are corrupted or you just don't need them. When you click this action, a warning message will appear asking for your confirmation before the recovery points associated with this replica virtual machine are removed from the local disk. 
Once you click yes, the cancel failover option will be removed. Cancel the action. Right click the VM and click on connect. Let's unlock our Windows Server 2025 core VM. Log into this Windows Server using administrator account. Type the command mkdir after hyphen UFO and press enter to create a folder named after UFO. Type the command ls and press enter to verify that the folder was created successfully. Let's minimize virtual machine connection. Again right click on VM, point to replication and then click on remove recovery points. Click on yes. This ensures that the recovery points are merged. You can also break the replication partnership by right clicking on the VM, pointing to replication and then clicking on remove replication. On confirmation pop-up, click on remove replication. Under replication health, we can see the state is not applicable. Once the production site is set up, you can configure replication to the new host and perform a planned failover. Right click on test VM01 and select connect. Let's again type the command ls and press enter. We can confirm that the folder which we created before deleting recovery points is still exist on our server. This is how you can perform an unplanned failover for Hyper-V VM replica. That's all for this video. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on Microsoft Hyper-V and other Microsoft related topics. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.